everything we've done so far is to have a Microsoft Word file alongside our document and copy and paste text across. At first, you know, it's a nice way of being able to see how we can take copy from Word and see that populated in InDesign, but it isn't really the most efficient way to work. Ideally, you'd place that directly into your InDesign file. So let's take a look at that technique for the remaining article. I'll go across to File and then choose Place. It takes me to my Links folder. I'll click on Copy US Election Edition. I'll make sure that the Show Import Options is turned on. Always should be turned on whenever you're importing text content and then click on Open. From your side of here, the default option should give you checkboxes for everything turned on across the top. Now we don't have any of this content such as index text, footnotes and endnotes. So even though they're turned on, it doesn't have any effect. Under use typographers quotes, I would always suggest that you turn that on because you'll get those lovely 66 and 99 typographers quotes rather than those horrible smart quotes. And then the best practice thing to do is to remove all of the formatting from your text by making sure that this radio button is turned on. Go up to the top, click OK, and that text loads into your cursor, rather like an image. And then you can click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag just to the side of the page. And an area called the pasteboard, uh, it's quite common to introduce content off the side of the page, edit it as you need. And then when it's ready, you can then add it to the page content. So from here, there's not a great deal we need of this. I don't need certainly the top portion, so I can select everything here from um, 10 p.m. last night all the way up and then delete that. What I do actually need is to click and drag from Tory MP's Rage across and then down to the bottom of the text here. I can right click and choose copy, hit the escape key, and then I can go to edit and I can choose paste and that will put the content that I need in a new text frame. Move that just up here like so. And then just drag the bottom right hand handle all the way down here, just underneath the red arrow that we have. I'll pick up my zoom tool so we can get a clearer look at this. And then as I suggested in the previous video, apply the formatting to your text that's going to most predominantly be seen. And that is usually always the body, the main bulk of an article. So go across, click on the paragraph uh, style drop down menu, and we can choose body. Now apply that, hover your cursor over the top line. As long as your cursor is flashing away in that line somewhere, then you can go back to that same menu and you can choose US small headline. We don't need the line reporters, so I'm going to triple click on that and delete it. And then with my cursor now in the line for the first reporter's name, I'll go back up to the drop down menu and I'll choose US reporter name because this style has four lines above it for this special edition. I'll click in the next line down and then go to last reporter name. We don't need body, so I can triple click on that line and delete it. I'll then hit the escape key on the keyboard, hover my cursor over the top middle handle and just pull that up a touch so that it lines up with the text for the main headline as well. I'll hover over the text frame and double left click and drag across these paragraphs because they do need to have the indented version of the body. So I'll click on the drop down menu and choose body indented. And then if I just move down a little bit, I need to do the same for the other article as well. Change that to 07 body indented. I can also see that I've got some stats to add in as well. So if I double click on the word candidate, I'll change that to Biden with 248, Trump with 214. Uh, spoiler alert, Biden does eventually win. And in the next video, we'll take a look at resolving the issue of our text crashing into those numbers and arrows.